All right, here we are kicking off round one here with Dominic Davis versus Alejandro Clayton. Alejandro comes up with the jab. Yeah, he does. Dominic, Dominic needs to double his jab up to get in the inside. Davis does in the blue. Yeah. A little bit, little bit of head movement, too, wouldn't hurt Davis either, especially coming in as a shorter fighter. Yeah, he needs to stay off the line, keep the head angled and get the jab up. Work that footwork a little bit more, and he'd be all right. Dominic's just an amateur, so hopefully that'll come with the experience. Clayton, you can see him just waiting. Waiting. Dominic reaches with those shots, and uh, it's going to start bothering them later rounds. So that round's two and three. Seems like he's 
hesitant, he's hesitant to punch. Mm -hmm. He caught that counter he didn't like. Now he's thinking, thinking too much, so just letting it go. There it goes. Those straight, those straight shots by Clayton's what's eating him. Dominic appeared to be hesitant the rest of that round yeah. after coming out. A couple of those shots he caught made him a little tentative. He didn't really want to engage anymore. He's um, he's in there with the guy who's probably a little bit faster than him. He should maybe take his time and change his punch cadence up just a little bit. It's like the rhythm and the tempo of his punches. As he keeps doing the same exact thing, he'll jump in to try to throw a double jab, double jab right hand, but he's doing it at the same cadence. He, he, he needs to kind of space it out just a little bit to kind of throw the guy off. Change up his rhythm some. Change up his rhythm some. Put his hands up high. Ride, ride him down a little bit. Get on the inside. Try to bait him or trap him into something. I see what you're saying. You think Dominic's tired? He took a seat now. Possibly. Could be nervous. Energy could be. Uh, you never a lot know. of things. Here we go, about to kick off round two. Clayton comes back, legs ready to shoot that jab. You can see it. I think Dominic's standing up a little too tall to be fighting the tall man. Yeah, he's, he's just throwing his jab as a filler. He's not really trying, trying to land it. He's throwing his jab as a filler to land his right hand, which he shouldn't, he shouldn't always do this. Sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't, especially if you're fighting against a good counter punch. Like Dave, Davis gives some telltale signs. He only throws when he's standing up. Like he creeps down and like he's going to do something, then he'll punt, stand back up to throw, and, and that's some telltale signs that Clayton's reading all day. Yes. He needs to ease his way in just a little bit and throw that double jab. Yeah. Ease his way in just a little bit. He's throwing it from too far away, so it steps too big. It's causing him to be off balance. Davis came out in the first round trying to be the aggressor. Now he's the one fighting off the back foot. That kind of worked for him on that one. He landed a, a decent one, too. Probably the best shots he's landed all five. Davis looks like he's just trying to get Clayton to get engaged in a, in a yeah, slug out with him. He's, he's, not, he's not dominating the flow of the fight. Oh, that's a problem. He did, he did better in that round. But I mean, yeah. yeah, it was better, but still not a winning round. Last round here. Let's see if Davis's uh, corner can get him making the proper adjustments to make it a close fight and make it a tougher fight for here for Clayton in the end. Go round three. Round three. Let's see what he does. Uh, still eating that jab. Still no head movement at Davis. Still stepping in from too far away. Yeah. No matter how fast you are, if you're stepping in from too far away, if your hands don't move with your feet and your feet don't move with your hands, you're not going to land your punch punches and more you, often than not. And you know, that's what a lot of people don't understand about just fighting in general. No matter what what style you're fighting in, fighting is a lot of short steps done quickly. Yes. And you get these guys like Davis who keeps trying to lunge in from out back, makes makes him a little nervous. And you know, but to me that could be lack of sparring because in sparring I learned how to read the man's yeah. reach. Davis actually he spars a lot. I see him spar a lot. Yeah. He does the same thing in sparring. In sparring, yeah, okay, so it hasn't been corrected yet. But, but you know, he's got some good trainers up here his at the end of the room. His spacing is off. 
Yeah. The spacing is off. The thing is, when you're constantly told that, you have to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Exactly. <laughs> right hands. Yeah. <laughs> Try doubling up that jab a little bit more this time, but. <laughs> David shows some resiliency in this fight. Clayton didn't do much that round, though. And David seemed to be fighting behind him too much. Absolutely. You know, uh, that third round, though, Clayton seemed to take, like, take the round off. He didn't throw much, didn't have much output. He actually got caught with a few decent shots from Davis. Yeah, but he, Davis, still, he should have just put, he should have pushed the issue more. Absolutely. on the judges' scorecards. All right, we have a winner. Out of the blue corner, Alejandro Clayton! And in case y'all didn't hear that, Alejandro Clayton won by decision. It was a good learning curve, though, for Davis. go back in the lab and work. That is it. Who do we have next? Up next, it looks like we have Kimoni Edmund versus Hiram Longoria. Got a Reed fighter in here. Another Tulsa legendary Keith Reed from the Reed Foundation. Yeah, he's he's doing a lot with those kids over there. Yeah, he is. He uh, bring, every now and then they bring him over here to spar. I think Edmund needs to looks looks a little jittery. His hands keep twitching. He's giving some telltales. Watch him drop that right before he throws that jab. Say it. Yes. Just yes. just that little flinch. Just, yep. Just for the, all you need is that millisecond. And if you see it, you can just throw your head off center line. Know his head's going to be there. Shoot your right hand. You know. That's what I always tell my fire. I said, trust it. It's going to be there. He ain't moving. If you see that telltale sign, take it. Say so he's getting caught with that right hand. Right yeah. yeah. That little telltale. Both look a little jittery, though. Both. They do. Both. Both look a little nervous. I mean, this is this is pretty big crowd in here at the engine room. Longoria stalking. Longoria looks like he's ready just to bang it out. Well, Edmonds in the. Moving and Edmund was using decent movement, but he's not doing anything off of it. No, he's just he's just moving. Not even fighting off his back foot, he's just moving. He needs 
to understand this is amateur boxing. You have to be busy. You, you have, have to, to be busy. You have to land clean shots. Absolutely. Busy wins the fight in the amateur. He keeps putting his chin up in the air. Oh, he's yeah. He needs to keep his chin down and relax. Edmund look a little tired. Look at him. Might have been all that moving. All that moving. You know, there wasn't a lot of fireworks in that round for both of them to look a little tired. I, I would think I gave that round to Haram. I, I would too. He pushed the action, landed the cleanest shots. Edmund looked a little too square right there to shoot a, a quality shot off. Edmund needs to be first. He's trying to constantly counter and wait. Mm -hmm. He should be first. You know, uh, as squared up as he gets when he stands there, uh, Longoria needs to go to that body. Shoot that jab to the body and set up something over up top. Edmund's got some good movement. He just don't put nothing together yes. with it. Footwork's on point. He just needs to believe in his hands more. Yes, he does. A little slip there. A slip. You know, again, I think Edmund, Edmund, could, Edmund could do some damage if he put a, puts a double jab behind it off that movement because he, he opens up a couple angles because... Uh, that, that was a decent jab. He should double it up right off of that. Absolutely. Because Longoria is chasing him. He's not cutting the ring off. And you get a guy that chases you, you know, you can put him in some bad situations. He's just walking right at you. Oh, there was that head hanging up that you talked about, picking that chin up. You need to do that old tennis ball trick. Yeah. Put the old tennis ball underneath the chin. You know, it's funny these days, you don't see a lot of those old training that we that we got taught. No, you don't. You, you see a lot of these people watch I too think, much. I think it's needed though. A lot of, a lot, like I said, there's a lot of fitness guys who call themselves boxing Absolutely. And, and it drives me crazy. And, and you know, as well as I do, taking one or two fights don't make you a boxer. No, it doesn't. You know, it just means you- You happen to be a person who's partaking in the sport of boxing, but you're not a boxer. A absolutely. And, and that's what you get with people. They want to take a few and then say they did it and then try to open up an expensive gym. Yes, yes. Yeah. I've seen it a lot. I still think Longoria can put that, put any shot he wants to that body. He needs to quit lunging in, though. That's what Edmund's waiting on is those big lunges. I mean, he's still dropping that. He still drops right that left right took, before he, oh, he right before he throws it. Right before he throws it, it comes down to the, the way, chest. The way Edmonds falling back with those shots may make them seem worse than what they are. Touche. Edmonds fighting like he's worried about getting hit. Right. And when you worry about getting hit, you're thinking about losing. Exactly. And you can't think about winning if you're constantly thinking about getting hit. This is the game where punches are thrown, so you're going to get hit another yeah. right hand. He should be first. He's fighting, he's fighting behind Hiram. And he's the faster fighter. Right. He, exactly. I totally agree. He should be first because he's the faster man. He's, he's, he's fighting behind him, and he puts you in a position where you look like you're constantly having to fight the guy off. Right. When you're doing that, you don't look, you don't look in control, and sometimes judges sway the fight in the other guy's favor. 
based on that. Like, to me, it's not that Edmonds having a bad night. He's making himself look like he has a bad night. Like he smothered himself right there. That was a good fight, but I think I'd have to give it to Longoria. I agree. I agree. I think Longoria took that one. And in case y'all didn't hear that, winner out of the blue corner, which was Haram Longoria. We just believe Haram outworked his opponent. Here we go, we're starting amateur fight number three here. Which we have Johan Alvarado out of Salisaw fighting Travis Dixon from Lawton. Alvarado comes in here representing, representing that culture. A flair for the dramatic. I'm telling you. Juan Alvarado and Travis Dixon, Bad Boys Boxing Club in Lawton, Oklahoma. Diamond Ring, Diamond Ring in Salisaw, Oklahoma. stick to that though absolutely Alvarado doesn't have much movement right now there it is get that timing there it is like you said he stick behind that jab that jab's there for Dixon You 
see the difference in these guys' nerves. They're both composed. Yes. He has to be careful going straight back. I see a lot of a lot of young kids going straight back and trying to use that shoulder work. Well, they really don't understand it and don't know how to do it properly. Absolutely. Just because you watch Floyd Mayweather don't mean you are. And there was tons of fight, other fighters who did it before Floyd. They don't, they don't get that. Right there is what you yes. meant, going right straight yep. back. Exactly. He got, went straight back into a one-two. Alvarado seems strong, like he's wearing him down already. Dixon's in the position, again, like I said, where you don't want to seem like you have to fight the guy off. Just there for a second to look like that. Nice hook. Nice little uh, lunging hook there. Dixon still keeps his head up high, even though he tries to hide behind that shoulder. Exactly. And that's, that's what people don't get. When you take a master like Floyd, Floyd never took his eyes off of him. Right. He tucked that chin and watched you the whole time. Watch, watch how you mess up. Watch now, your Alvarado, time. Alvarado just needs to stay on him and press the action, go to his body a little bit. He can possibly, he could possibly get a stoppage. Yeah, I think so too. That little lunge and hooks working. Good, but you know, good round for Alvarado. You know, one thing though I noticed is when I when I fought amateurs, I did not like the cheek headgear. You know, a lot of guys say that. It, I never had a problem with it. I I always did like like. And but, I know a lot of guys are saying that. But but I, I got I got high cheekbones. So it always felt like they were pushing into my eyes. Right. Like so that that's that's one thing I've never I've never liked. And a part of that I stole that from Mo. Mo was always like, nah, don't get one with the with the cheeks. And I was like, alright, so I get it without it, and then it was like when I put one on, it felt like it was a whole different thing. Yeah, I've I've heard, I've heard quite a few guys say that, but I've never had a problem with it. Alvarado took a second to come off that stool. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. See how this round goes. They have the first round for Alvarado, though. I, I do, too. Oh, nice jab right out the gate by Dixon. He needs to follow it, though. He lands one at a time, and that's it. He lands, he lands a punch in any kind of postures. He, need, he needs to keep working. Absolutely. He needs to work on putting it together, mixing up those combinations in there. Keep throwing that jab. That's how you break a guy's defense down. It's called picking the lock. That's how you do it. Absolutely. And you know, to me, a lot of things in boxing are starting to get forgot. It, uh, lots of them. Like, like the jab. A lot of people don't use it, like you just said, to pick a lock anymore. It is the most important punch in boxing. And, and always will be. Almost in any fight, in my opinion, it, it's a really tempo set. It's like, I liken it, I tell guys, it's like if you have a long spear in one hand and you have a, a hammer or a short sword in the other, or a hammer in the other hand, you want to stick them with the long spear as much as possible to run them down. You don't want to run right up to them with a short hammer to hit them with when you got a long spear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alvarado, he's breathing out the mouth. There you go. Dixon needs to start letting them hands go more. I think Dixon might be seeing that. He's pressing the issue a little more this round. Yes, yes, yes. There it is. He, he kept, had, there he you go. A, he had Alvarado just a little bit unsure there for a second. Absolutely. He's still unsure. You can see the difference in yes. his throwing style now. You know, people don't get those 12 ounce gloves get real heavy yes, they real do. quick. Feel like ankle weights. They will. Look like Alvarado's trying to just go for one big shot now. He, nice right hand. That's a really good yeah, right hand. Yeah, I think he felt that one a little bit. Yeah. It seems as though uh, Dixon's confidence is coming up just a little bit. Well, in in Alvarado, I think that was Dixon, a Dixon round. Dixon, maybe. I think he took. I think he took that round. Yeah, I think he just evened up this fight. The other thing is, is if you notice this whole second round, uh, Alvarado was real flat-footed. Dixon has Grady Brewer in his corner. Laden, Laden uh, legend. Boxer from Laden, Oklahoma, a legend. Former uh, TV show contender winner. Yes, 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 he won the contender. Yes, he did. Which represented really well from Oklahoma, you know. Oh, he did us proud. He did us proud. So 
There's Alvarado still not out when they just uh, gave him seconds out. Still not standing. I think Alvarado might have punched himself out in that first round. Possibly. Or dried himself out too much to make the way because he's a big man. He is big. And now he's letting Dixon, big man, the big yes, man. Yes. Dixon needs to stay Good with it. He doesn't need to get caught up in those exchanges like that, but he needs to keep bigging it, backing up. Looks like man. a fight's broken out of the yeah. end room. Here we go. Here it is. Ah, he's about to get that standing eight if he yes, don't watch yes, it. Yes, they both want to win. Both want to win. Uh-oh. Dixon's standing in the corner. You can see Dixon waiting to fire that right hand. Dixon needs to watch that turning that hand over, waiting for it. And get them hands up, both of them. That little jump, that little lunging hook's been working all night for Alvarado. It's one of my moves. I have to show him how to do it. <laughs> right? He's pressing the action. He's going forward. Oh, man. Oh, he didn't like that Another one. Another one. That right hand's finding its home, but that's because Dixon keeps leaving that uh, left down and not oh, doing man. a proper oh, shoulder good roll. Good body shot. Good body shot by Alvarado. Dixon may have punched himself out just a little bit because now he's backing up. There's that old trick he needs to fire when he feels that yes, foot hit does. that rope. Yes. Now Alvarado's playing the numbers game on him. Yep. He's making a lot of punches on him. Being busier. Yes, he, he's taking the round. He's, he's taking the he's round. He's stealing it. He's letting him yes. steal it. Yes. Hey yeah, I, I got that round for Alvarado. I do too. I think Alvarado wins this one two to one. Yes, he does. Record. I you know, Dixon came on strong though in that second round. In the end, he he definitely gave it gave it a good effort. It was a good, it was a good fight. Yeah, Dixon looks tired in there. I think he did uh, punch himself out in that round two and through round three. There's a little bit more road work in there. Yep. That's your insurance policy. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> road work is your friend. And you know, people don't people don't like fighters don't get it until they get in there that, that 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 road work and conditioning helps you recover quicker from a big shot too. So, good fight. It was a good fight, though. It was a solid fight. Best fight so far. I agree. Next up, we have Ramon Billing from the Indian Room fighting against Azrael Acosta from Bad Boys Gym and Law. Look, like we got a full house in here tonight. Starting to look that way, more people are coming in.
right night in Tulsa. With Oklahoma's number one broadcast team. Now, see, I'll say one thing I like about. Did you say that last name, Billion? Is he looks warmed up. You can see the sweat on his jersey. A lot of people don't warm up their fighters. They don't. What's the old saying? Can't cook with, with cold grease. You cannot. If you didn't warm up those fast twitch fibers, they're not going to fire till round two or three. It comes right at Ramon. He just wanted to slug it out. We just got fist bumped by uh, Tulsa legendary coach Melinda Brown. Better know as Unk. Oh, good, good use of that reach by. Yeah, Ramon needs to push the action. A lot of times I've seen him in sparring and he's doing it now. Sometimes he'll throw shots just for the sake of throwing shots. Just, just as a filler, not really the landing. See, like not that. Really, not, yes. If you're doing that, you're fighting against a guy that's trying to uh, hit you with pinpoint accuracy. Even if he's not that accurate, as long as he's trying, he's going to catch you. Absolutely. Acosta's really using that reach and that speed on him. Yes, and it, I, like, it's, I like his jab. I do too. It's very solid. I, and he moves off that head movement. He just don't make you miss. He makes you miss with an intent behind it. You know, the one thing I don't like about Acosta that he's doing, though, is he keeps them hands down. Like both hands. And stands very squared at you to try to open up for offense. So if a man comes at you squared, I already know what his intent is. Exactly. <laughs> like if you come walking at me squared up, I'm like, okay, this guy's going to try to open up real fast. That's, that's where it, 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 may, it may take a while for these young men, if ever, to understand that this is a thinking man's game. Absolutely. And, and like if, if Ramon would would put a little more thought into it, he could pick him apart with that jab he when he's so squared. He could. Brady Brewer giving him instructions in between rounds. Showing him how to torque that right hand just right. As a coach, I would already be telling him to watch out for that right hand as I'm watching him warm that right hand up between the rounds. Because he's there, there it is. He's waiting for him to move right into it. There you go, Ramon. Like we said, let your hands go. Work that jab when he comes up at your squared. So he seems tentative like he's unsure of himself. Very, very much so. You know, there's not there's not much head movement from Acosta. If you would press the issue, you could catch him because he's staying on center yes. line the whole fight. Yes. Even when Acosta comes in with one of those big shots, he's not taking off much off center line. You could you could just take your own head off and fire your own right hand for right hand with him. She 
He's, he's fighting. He's fighting behind the costume. Again. He's fighting behind. You're not gonna win a fight like that. Nope. There's a reason why it's called a fight. You gotta fight. There it is. If he just sat down more on them punches and believe in it, I think Ramon would be all right. Yes. But he has to punch. He has to, he has to be active. He needs to be first. He needs to show some initiative. Be first and last. So he's fighting behind him. He's waiting for him, to, for him to punch at him, and then he just starts throwing. Then they engage. Then he engages it. Yep. We got we got some seat jumpers in the house. People try to steal VIP. Ramon looks a little tired in that corner. Arms up on the rope. Tired, frustrated. And, and as a fighter, you just know if you're down on the cards. So you know. If you're honest, if you're honest with, your, with yourself, you know. Absolutely. And there it is. Acosta's coming out pressing that issue, using that reach. And he's also fighting off the end of Acosta's punches, which isn't going to work too well for him, being that Acosta's a longer reach right. fighter. Right. And he's not doing anything to negate that. He's just, he's no head movement, not trying to come inside. He should be coming inside, trying to make Acosta uncomfortable in any way he can. Take some steam off them long arms. Like right there. Catches him with a good shot. He backed the taller man off. Got to look a little tired this round. Probably doesn't matter. He won the other two. Yeah, I think so too. But now's a good chance for uh, Ramon to get in there and, you know, press the make, issue. Try to make something happen. Absolutely. You get a tired man in front of you, a lot can happen real quick. And Acosta comes on strong even at the end. Comes on strong at the end. That's a good fight, though. Yeah, right. I think Acosta takes that.
And the winner, if y'all didn't hear, was out of the blue corner, Ezreal Acosta. That was David Perez addressing the crowd about his big fight coming up on the zone on April 26th. If anybody has the zone, you can check that out on April 26th. Like we got Antonio Hayes from Bad Boys out in Lawton going against Nathan Garcia from last round out of Ponca City. After this fight, looking intense in there, boy. Oh, nice little check hook by Garcia. Can't come in with them hands down like that. That's what Haynes just learned. Haynes trying to come in slick. Yeah, he moved that right hand, put that right hand where it needs to be. Stepping in, doubling his jab up to get in there. Absolutely. Can't just walk in on a big man. Don't work that way. Garcia needs to turn them hips more when he throws that right hand. He's shortening up that right hand by not getting that foot turned over with it. See it? It's almost like he's just dropping it. Yeah. He'd get a lot of torque out of that right hand if he'd snap it with that hip turned over. So when he's teaching that old trick of sitting down on them punches. Hey, he seems he has good head movement, but he's not he's not doing enough off of it. Absolutely. He's not making him pay for anything. See when he 
rolls his head like that and does that little figure eight head move, he should double his jab. Absolutely. Because eventually that's going to be able to set up that big right hand to come through behind it. You know, I expected more of the movement from the littler man, from Hayes, but it looks like Garcia wanting to make the movement out of this. That's a right hand, that was nice. See, Hayes needs to start moving. He's just staying right at the end of those punches, and Garcia knows it, keeps letting him go. See, when he stops, they... Garcia letting... Uh, Haynes letting Garcia do what he yes. wants in there. I, I would say guys, Garcia probably took that. He probably edged him in there. What do you say? I think so, too. Yeah. And it, it wasn't even that he edged him. It was that Haynes let him he edge let him. him. He let him. He gave it to him. Yeah. yeah. He gave it to him. You see Grady. I guarantee Grady's saying that right now. Yeah. Look at him. Don't forget to visit Elote Cafe Catering on the back of Canio. They have tacos, shrimp, salsa, and queso, along with some libations like margaritas, beer, and coffee. Hayes looked like he listened to Grady that time. Yeah, Look at the head moving back. Doubling his, doubling his jab up off of that. Yeah, absolutely. Be active off of that. Don't just be defensive. Be active. Ah, I got him with a good right, right. hand. Another, another one. one. Get them hands hand up. up. Another one, three in a row. Get, them hand, get that head down, them hands up. He needs to adjust his defense. Absolutely. He needs to adjust his defense. He's doing what he thinks looks good, but he needs to adjust his defense because he still got hit with three straight right hands. And that was the fourth one just right then. Again, he's, he gets flat-footed right in front of Garcia for no reason. Stops right there. Garcia's fixing to open back up. Nope. Garcia might be getting a little tired. Good right hand. Right hand to the chest, too. That was nice. Absolutely. Anything you do to offset him, people don't get that. Haynes is giving these rounds away. It's he not is. that not he that he's is. just getting out it's, fought. It's not so much what of what Garcia is doing is what he's not. Doing. Absolutely. There you go. You know, I, I catch a lot of fighters nowadays too. They're they're being taught how to like fight like their idols right exactly so a lot of these guys are coming in idolizing like a roy jones and floyd right, mayweather right, right. and not understanding that roy jones and floyd mayweather learned the the basics first yes they learned the basics first so that way when you had you need something to fall back on at some point when what you do get you caught right and and that's what, what these here's the thing What's just as important as, learn, as learning a move, doing a move, or a punch is understanding it. Absolutely. Under, understanding it. Absolutely. The most thing. And they don't understand it. They, they just they they get don't. taught that style. They say, I saw Roy Jones do this, or I saw Chavez do this, or I saw Sugar Ray Leonard or Mayweather do this, so now I'm going to do it. But they don't understand it. That's what Absolutely. They then they, they, they run into a lot of bad things in the ring. You, you know, one thing I found that helped me as I was, uh, as, as I was, fighting am just an amateur was I quit studying fighters and studied their trainers, trainers yeah. to tell me how and why they did what they did and it opened up the, my eyes way more than watching just the fighter because it made more sense than when I watched Duran and I watched Tyson and I watched all of them do that oh it looks like Grady told uh told Haynes that he needs this round 
Haynes comes out a little more authority, trying to throw them punches behind them steps. But you know, it might be too late because I think he gave away rounds one and two. I think so. But, it, but nevertheless, it looks like a fight is about to break it, out. It sure does at any moment right which, now. Which is a good thing. I mean, you it, know, it, it could possibly be a good thing for Haynes. Possibly. If, if Haynes keeps stepping in with that, he needs to put his chin down, first of all. But if he can come in and get his head off center line, that overhand right's there. It is. And, that, and that's always a big killer with them taller guys when you yeah. can get inside. That looping right hand. It, it he is. Right. He needs to quit trying that pullback move. Yeah, because the guy's longer in range. You can't, you can't pull that to long guy. That's just suicide. Again, there it is. Garcia could pull the pullback because he's tall enough. Yeah. looks tired. He looks very tired. Looks very tired. He's trying, but he's tired. Got his mouth open breathing. Uh oh, oh letting Garcia put, to, put together combinations like that. Yeah. Nice body shot. He felt Good body. Oh. He felt, you know, I told you it got to him. He felt it. Yep. He still getting to him. him. It's he still hurting. Oh, this fight, yeah. Eight count. Yeah, told you. Hey, Cam, I knew it. I saw it. You can see it in the tight. body language. His body language, he doesn't look like he wants to keep going on. Mm. He, doesn't, he doesn't look like he wants to keep going on. If Garcia wanted to, he could He could have ended that. He could have ended the fight. Well, he may have wanted to, but maybe he didn't know how. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, because, like, especially when you're young in these uh, beginning fights, you right. get nervous. Like you're like you're like you're like is he really hurt as bad as I think he is? Right. You know, because you don't want to get reckless and get cut. Which yourself. is why you continue to pick that lock. Right? Absolutely. That's, that's how you find out. Absolutely. And you know that lock was there. It was picked. It was there. Yeah. It was picked. for Nathan Garcia. Very good fight. Very good fight. And a way to go for Haynes for showing good sportsmanship. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I, I really think that was a really good fight for both of them. Yes. He, even though Garcia won, Haynes can take a lot what he should be and, doing. And, and it probably was a learning experience. When I say learning, what a lot of people don't know is not, I'm not necessarily just mean as far as the art of fighting goes, but you learn to deal with the crowd better, you learn to deal with your emotions better, your feelings, your Absolutely. stress. Absolutely. The nerves, you learn to deal with all the anxiety, you learn to deal with that. Absolutely. Time after time, the more the more you get in there, you learn to deal with these things. Next fight we have Axel Becara. Becara versus Kyrie Majid. Axel is a boxer from the engine room and uh Majid is from Bad Boys Boxing in Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, Grady Brewer got not ahead of him. Yes, he does. <laughs> I believe this is uh, Axel's. I think this is Axel's first fight. Actually, I'm pretty sure it is. You know, and, and I, I like that you, what the point you made about uh, both of them getting used to fighting in front of the crowd. Yes, yes. That's such a big thing that people don't realize. Because a lot of times fighters, you can get not necessarily scared of the opponent. Some guys get like that, but you can get overwhelmed by the occasion. Absolutely. And that can, throw, that, that, can, that can throw you off. I mean, you, you go, everything's on the line. You see people in the crowd. You see your friends here and everything. And you are, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> right, 100%. You know, G Gabriel Rosado said a quote that stuck with me a long That's time ago. That's my guy. I brought him in, in, in at the sparring party years ago. He oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, what did he say? He said that uh, boxers, uh, everyone fails in life. 
He said, but boxers are willing to fail on the biggest stage in yes. front of in, in front, front of, of million. Everyone. Yeah. It was, it was, I, I probably butchered his quote because it wasn't exactly that, but that was the gist of it. Right. But I, and I absolutely love that quote. I was like, man, that's that's real facts. Real facts. When you get in there, it don't matter if you're on this level or on, on up. You're willing to fail in front of everybody. Let's see. Alex is moving behind a good jab. Needs a little more head movement. You can tell it's the first fight. First yes. fight jitters. It's okay. Yes, yes, you can tell. He's trying. He seems enthused about it. Absolutely. He has to put his hands up, though. To all the kids watching, this is what I tell everyone, and I learned this. I learned this. The worst thing that can happen in a boxing match is that you get into a fight. Absolutely. And, and you know, you you know more than more than most about the fight that breaks out. The fight breaks out late. Yes. yes. Because yes. Yeah, exactly. everyone says, "I need exactly. this. Exactly. I need this exactly. round." And when, when you both have like exhausted all the certain tactics you're gonna you're gonna use, and everyone is, you've read each other uh, properly and everything. After that, the fight breaks out. Absolutely. It, and that fight may break out for 30 seconds or it may be break out for five rounds. <laughs> Man. You know? Axel has to keep his left hand up. Yeah, he does. He keeps getting hit, he keeps getting hit with the right hand. You know, if you want to go with the busier fighter, it was Axel. Yeah, I think he got clipped a little bit too much for clean shots, though. But he, when, was, he was busy. When he come inside, he let him just dictate what he wanted. Right. He let, he let Kyrie come in and just... If, if Kyrie would do what Grady just said about working that jab, I think he could make it a long night. Don't forget all that's tuning in. After these amateur fights, we got three professional fights coming yes, up. Yes, we get to the big boys. Like Axel needs to work on that, uh, his movement, probably his rhythm a little more, and he's all right. He's got the heart for it. He's got the grit. He's open for that right hand. Yep. And he keeps getting hit with it. And Double jab. He's coming forward. He's busy. He, he is busy. He's very, he's very spirited about this. I mean, he, he's trying. But, but you get that out of a lot of fighters, and what I mean is they step in just doing this. Yes. Pumping that jab, thinking that's going to get them in. Using it as a filler to and try to land the right hand. But you, you open yourself up for lots of counts. Lots, because you're just moving straight on that center line. Evil things happen on that center Evil line. Evil things. Evil things. Malevolent. Especially when you're the shorter fighter doing yes. that to the taller fighter. See, I, I always watched a lot of footage of James Tony when he went heavyweight. That's one of my favorite fighters, man. That's that's where if you if, if you ever watch me work with people, it's it's that's the same yeah. thing I'll do. I'll work off them ropes, roll around on them. And you know you know the thing. Also keeps getting hit with with, with the uh, right hand. And right. Heck just watch Heck the referee. Guy known for a long time. Great buddy of mine, he's watching him very close because he keeps getting hit with the same right hand. Constantly. Even sometimes if a guy doesn't appear to be hurt, he can keep getting hit and keep getting hit. Sometimes he's like, you know what, that's enough. Ab absolutely. It's just sometimes, sometimes it's enough. Well, you know, th there's technically there's three people in there to save the save the fighter from himself. Yes. You got your cornerman first, you got the doctor, and you got the rat. It's the same as they sometimes... It's the adult's job to tell the young man what he's having. Absolutely, because you we wouldn't say it. Right. We go, we gonna we gonna sit there right. until until they carry us out on our shield. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, 
And you know, that's that, uh, was it Dempsey that said, I can teach you how to box, I can teach you how to do this, but I can't teach you how to fight. I think D'Amato. Yeah, it was D'Amato, yeah, yeah. Said, yeah. said, I can teach you all that, yeah. but I fight, can't teach you. A fighter, being a fighter is something that's in you, man. And that's it. I think Kyrie knows he's got that. He, he, he's finding his rhythm right there with the picking part of that right hand. There it is. Same right hand, like I was just saying. Axel keeps getting hit with the same right Every hand. time. And he's not seeing it. Like, he's not even trying to. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. He's showing a lot of spirit, though, man. Yeah. Still... And you can see the refs paying close attention. He's tired. Get on him, Axel. I, I think he would stop it if there was a big, devastating shot. If, if there was a wobbling shot in there, I think he would be like, yeah, he's had enough. What's keeping him in it is Axel's taking it. He's still very yes, coherent. He yes, he is. He's trying to fight back. Good body shot. Absolutely. And I think Kyrie's getting tired. His he hands is. are getting lower Axel's and lower. Showing, Axel's showing a lot of spirit. Axel's only 13 years old. Oh, okay. He's a big 13-year-old. Very big 13. <laughs> He has a brother who's 17, Daniel. He's a boxer. Daniel's a very good amateur fighter. One is constantly get, get hit, gets hit in the right hand. Both of them looking real tired there at the end. I think Kyrie oh, takes that it. one. He got it. It's uh, Axel's first fight. You know, yep. good experience for him. Getting used to being in front of a crowd. Now, the, the, the actual fight setting is supposed to be in the gym. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, quick question okay. from the Ami to the pro. Okay. <laughs> is first fights, do you think it's more comfortable being at home or do you think it's more comfortable being on the road? Based on the, the stress you'll feel from hometown crowd, you're the hometown? You know, you know, you know for me, possibly, I wouldn't have cared, but it's. That's a good question, man. I guess it depends on the fighter. That's a good question. Because I know a lot of guys, with their fighting at home, their girlfriends there, their mom, their friends, Everybody. their boys you went to school with, and it, it can make you nervous. It makes you very nervous. All the pressures on there, to, not just to win, but to perform. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you always have someone, someone who makes a smart remark, like, don't get knocked out, don't lose. They put that on your head. And right? Bother, and yeah, it, it, can, it can bother you. I had my first amateur fight in Tulsa, though. I won uh, by, uh, I think, second round knockout. I, uh, me, I don't know. <laughs> That's always the question. See, like me, I came from Tahlequah. So I felt like even though I would train out in Tulsa, but Tulsa wasn't my home. So I never got to fight what I felt like was in my home because right. I came from a podunk town, you know? So, hey, what? So everywhere was on the road. Everywhere was on the road, exactly. <laughs> Like, I never had a crowd cheer for me. <laughs> Man, wow. I, I come to Tulsa, I had to fight Tulsa fighters, and they're all like, oh, here's yeah. the Tulsa guy. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. 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 You know, then they look at me, I'm like, oh, I'm Native American. They, they thought, say, oh, he was just a big Mexican. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not one of us. Get out of here. Right? I was like, man, I have no home. <laughs> this next fight, we have Giovanni Bagata. And Samuel Thames. Samuel Thames from Bad Boys Boxing in Lawton, Oklahoma. Giovanni Vigata fights from fights out of the Reed Foundation in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Another Reed, another Reed fighter. Let's see what he does. They look ready. They look ready. These, these young men about to go to war, they look like it. You know, I like it. Some of, some of the best fights I've seen from amateurs are these, are these younger gentlemen. Yeah, the little ones. Sometimes. Yeah, they'll go at it, man. They'll go. They'll just go. Not realizing they're terrifying their mamas. <laughs> yeah. I, see, I, don't, I don't think Brewer's left. I think he's just been at the ring. <laughs> Brady seems like he's just, he, he may as well set up a cot there. He's like he's been there from, it seems like he's been there since the show has started. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him leave. Brewer, much like yourself, still look like he can get in there and go. Yeah, he's 
he's, like been, he's, he's been in there the last four or five fights. Oh, he, I'm sure he could. I'm sure he could. He, look, he looks like he's ready for a phone call. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, you hit those levels like, like you all did, and it's just your life. People don't get that. Like my friend Vinny Pazienza. Vinny Paz. Yeah. Paz, man, in the yep. Paz, my homeboy. Paz told me one time, he goes, Legend. Paz told me, he goes, Arlo, you realize every morning I still wake up and weigh myself? Legend. He said, I'm still 10 pounds in my fight weight just because it's in my head. Yep. And he goes, I can't get out of it. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. And it shows, like, he still gets in there, man. We'll go in there and I watch him throw some hands. I'm like, man, this dude can still smoke most of his people. I was actually, I actually went to his red carpet premiere in Vegas for, yeah. for Bleed for this. for this. I haven't seen that. Is it a good movie? It's a very good movie. Okay, I need to watch it. My, Miles Taylor portrays him very well. Okay, very, very well. Oh. Reed's boy's keeping his head up too high. There it yes, is. He Just is. got him caught. Fame is on it. There it is again. All he's got to do is shoot that straight right out there. Any straight shot is going to catch that too, like it's doing. But this is what you don't want to happen. This is a fight. It started out as a fight. Started out as a fight. Now, even with the shorter rounds, even with the shorter rounds, the headgears, and the shorter... Uh, shorter duration of the fight in general of the rounds and how many rounds you fight can you still set up a fight like you would as a pro in an amateur meaning what do you mean like like can you still set up the rounds like how you would want by slowing the tempo down yeah you can you can you, I mean, you have to really know what you're doing you have to be careful you have you to know. be a craftsman yes a master craftsman because we get that a lot in amateurs where they just run out and they're like oh, I only have two minutes yes. oh I only have two minutes and three rounds so they're trying to fit as much six minutes of action yes. as they can, not realizing it's still a boxing match. Right. Now you see it slow down, and you can see which one's the boxer. Mm Go round two. You you can see the more more poised boxer in there. Samuel's really using that reach against Giovanni. Good right hand and turning him as he's throwing. Like he he's got some good footwork. I don't even know if he notices what he's doing or if he's just naturally see, doing it. Giovanni, not again. He's in the position where he a lot of times he has to fight things off. Of him. Absolutely, and he it, it's because he puts himself in that situation. Yes, he does. I don't know if Giovanni, I think Giovanni, that height's really bugging him. It is. He doesn't realize he can still look over his brow and see him. He keeps picking his head up to see him, leaving himself open for that big right hand that keeps coming. There it comes. Yes. There it is again. Right hand. There it is again. Yeah, he's laying his weight on the too. Giovanni looking tired. Samuel in there still looking fresh. I, I think, but I also think with Giovanni is that he's overworking himself in there. He is. Like he's swinging and not. He is. He's, and, swinging, he's swinging for the fence. Yeah, and not connecting. Yeah. And you know when like when you, you, missing one punch, it's like 
when you miss one punch, it's almost like you threw 20 or 30 because it makes yourself, you get so fatigued after missing it. It's a mental thing that you get so fatigued after missing the shot. Absolutely. You can see it right there when he walked back to the corner. He, he, he looks, I don't want to say defeated, but he's, he does. Get, he's he getting looks, oh, He looks a little despondent. Yeah. Yes. We'll say that. Discouraged. Grady's at it again. Look at him. Yeah. Like, like I, I studied too many, like, uh, Manny Stewart's. Uh, a lot of the classics when I, when I got into boxing. Like, I studied Manny. I studied uh, Teddy. Uh, Nassim Richardson. And oh, man. That's, that's my guy, man. So, so, like, I lose my cool in that corner like them dudes did. You know, like, I noticed who I studied. Like, I'll, I'll just zone in and... Like, I, I loved how they did Some, that. Sometimes it's needed. A absolutely. You got to draw those guys back into it. Because I, I always consider the coach to be the general. Yes. You know, and he, he you got to. Absolutely. You, you got to get your soldier ready to go back to war. Even if he's hurt. Giovanni going for the fences with that one. Sammy needs to start working that jab again. Sammy needs to start putting that jab in there. He don't, he don't need to walk down him. Make him come to you. Right. Make him come to you. You're already winning. Don't step in his danger zone. There it is. Relax. See, he could have pulled that pullback move on those on those lunging shots. He needs to cut that ring off say chasing him. Good right hand. Chasing him's getting him caught. Oh, man. Oh! It was a punch, but it looked like it was in the back of the head or the side. I, yeah, so, okay. I guess he kind of pushed him with it. Good, I guess it's a good call by Hector. I, 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 I think that was just fatigue. Sitting in on Giovanni on that one. Because he, he's been doing that since round two, that kind of right, staggered right, he around. Yes. I think uh, Thames took that fight. I do too. And when Tulsa uh, legend old uh, Ronnie Warrior he just walked by. Wait on the judge's decision. Giovanni's still breathing out his mouth there at the end. Yeah, he was just wore out. Next, we have engine room fighter Omar Flores against Daniel Russell from Oklahoma City. This one might be a good one. They both come in with, the, with their uh, shoulders glistening like they warmed up.
Coming right out into a fight. Russell run, runs right out. Yeah. At Flores. Russell don't have a lot of head movement. Flores is keeping the pressure on him now. A very controlled pressure at that. Good not right just hand. not just whirlwind punches. That's what people don't realize about boxing. It's a lot of controlled fury. Yes. Oper like. Operative word, control. Very. I mean, like, like Flores is landing, and Flores, or not Flores, but Russell's landing and throwing a lot of shots, but to me, they're a lot of reckless shots. And the type of shots he's throwing, he's most likely going to wear himself out either before this round's over or for sure by the next round. Absolutely. Good uppercut. Good uppercut to the body by Flores. Oh, another, oh another. that one hurt. Them legs where they just got heavy real quick on Russell. Needs to go back to that body. That body work's working. <laughs> body work always works. Always. Another one. You know, there's so many things you can train in boxing, but yes. you can't train that liver. Flores, he should stay on him. He shouldn't. He shouldn't give that much ground and jump and back up. Absolutely, he's, he's right the taller there, right fighter. There. No, he's, he should hit him. Hit him to the body. Flores needs to start establishing that jab more from out, at long range. There it is. And Russell seems to take straight back whenever he starts working that jab. He could set up a long range right hand if he if, if he wanted to. Good clipping shot off the top of the head. A decent round. Of, I think Russell may have, may have edged him out in the May have. I'm not, I'm not certain. May have. I think that round's really going to come down to what the judge is like. Yeah, exactly. It's so, it's so subjective. Man. Very, it's so very. Because if you want to go with the busier fighter, we'll go with Russell. But I think if you want to go with the more tactician fighter, go with Flores. Very, very, very even round, though. I'm, ex I'm excited to see where the rest of this, where the rest of this fight goes. Flores, Flores needs to quit moving that right hand when he throws that jab. Yes. Just needs, right needs to leave it home and you ain't got to worry about it. Flores coming out looking a little tired this round. Yes, he does. He's not, he's not throwing as much, not throwing with the accuracy like he was. The thing is, I notice, I notice about a lot of these kids, a lot of times they get in there and their nerves takes them over and they get tired so fast. Because you can hear about them sparring lots of rounds in the gym or see them spar lots of rounds in the gym. Like I said, they get in there, they get overwhelmed by the occasion. Absolutely. Because th then you got two things weighing on you. You got the occasion weighing on you and the actual fight yes. weighing on you. Yes. You, gotta, and, you have to learn how to relax, man. And, and they don't realize that pre-fight jitters is still pumping your blood. It is. You know, and that's... And then you add, then it starts pumping faster when you get in there ready for the fight. That's why we have a saying: if you if you training for a twelve round fight, you should at least do everything you, everything you do the day of the gym should add up to at least sixteen rounds or more because you lose four rounds in the dressing room just Absolutely. with nerves and warming up and everything. You lose four rounds in the dressing room. I I can totally agree with that. Okay. Flores needs to go to the body, double his jab up and go to the body. The that body team. work was working in round one, and he's abandoned that whole game plan this round. Flores looks tired this round. He looks very tired. And again, it's not necessarily what the other guy's doing, it's what he's not doing. Yeah. That's, losing, that's losing this round.
It gets very hot in that kitchen, and when you're tired, that's not a good place to be. No. We are in a packed house tonight, standing room only. That's we are. That's we are. Final round. Third and final round. Russell needs to watch it. He's getting very arrogant in there. Yes, I saw that. That little stutter step yep. he did. Kind of rolled his hands a little bit. There it was. Right hand just caught him. Right oh, hand caught him one. again. Russell doesn't realize he's a counter waiting to happen. He's trying to ensure his victory, though. He's trying to take it. Yeah, he is. And until Flores makes him realize that, he's going to keep doing it. Flores is standing up a little bit too tall. Even for the tall fighter. He is. He's got to bend his, bend his knees just a little bit. Absolutely. Good body shot. Flores fighting like the tired fighter. Shooting them shoulder yes, punches. I think Russell might have uh, wore himself out. He backed his own yep. self to them ropes. Good ring generalship, though, by Russell. Always spinning out when they break him against the ropes. Taking the fight back to the middle of the ring. There's that overhand right that we talked about in them tall fighters. So he's thinking too much about offense. Just, I want to punch him back and punch him back. And sometimes he's getting caught in between those gaps. Absolutely. Florence seems exhausted. He does. Oh, I think Russell might have got a little hurt off that clip shot. His legs, legs got a little weary. Good fight. I think Russell takes it though. So do I. Takes a W like like we expected there.
Soy David Pérez de Tulsa, Oklahoma, y los quiero invitar a ver mi próxima pelea que va a estar en vivo en el canal The Zone. Va a ser abril 26 en Orlando, Florida. Va a ser otra batalla contra otro invicto y le vamos a ganar. Yo tengo un invicto record de 9-0 y él tiene 8-0. Vamos a seguir para adelante y espero que me apoyen. Gracias. Hey guys, it's David Perez from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to invite you guys out to check out my fight April 26th live on The Zone. We'll be in Orlando, Florida. Be another battle of undefeateds. I'm looking to take this guy's record. I appreciate you guys. If you guys come out and support me, if you're not able to catch the fight in live, it will be live on The Zone April 26th. I appreciate your guys' support.
Soy David Pérez de Tulsa, Oklahoma, y los quiero invitar a ver mi próxima pelea que va a estar en vivo en el canal The Zone. Va a ser abril 26 en Orlando, Florida. Va a ser otra batalla contra otro invicto y le vamos a ganar. Yo tengo un invicto record de 9-0 y él tiene 8-0. Vamos a seguir para adelante y espero que me apoyen. Gracias. Hey guys, it's David Perez from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to invite you guys out to check out my fight April 26 live on The Zone. We'll be in Orlando, Florida, be another battle of undefeateds. I'm looking to take this guy's record. I appreciate you guys if you guys come out and support me. If you're not able to catch the fight in live, it will be live on The Zone April 26th. I appreciate your guys' support. Good morning. 
showtime or is it time for the show? I thought they were doing a live feed of this. Isn't that what this is? I don't know. I don't know. I can't find it. Because I was going to share it. Maybe, maybe it just doesn't like your phone. Oh, it could be on their YouTube page. Okay. Who'd you say? Just kidding. Forgive me, y'all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Elijah fighting out of the Elijah Wan fighting out of the engine room in Austin Ward from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Hakeem Elijah one. He seems very, he seems very relaxed. To me. Very, very relaxed. I wonder if his parents were 95, 94 Rockets fans. <laughs> the dreams. You know what I mean? Everybody remembers that team. I've always wondered that because I've watched them come up through the amateur ranking. But the dream does look ready. Looks like he's ready to give someone a drink. Yeah, he does. We put him on Dream Street. Austin Ward looks really relaxed in his corner, though. Austin Reed, actually. Austin Reed looks Austin, very. Austin Reed, he has a uh, he has a little, he has about around 15 pro boxing matches. His record's one in 15. So I mean, experience is experience. That's still 16 fights. Exactly. He's, uh, usually, I know he's, he's fought some MMA. And he's done some kickboxing also. So, so he has fight experience and ring experience. 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 Experience of being in the ring. Yes, he does. Akeem Olajuwon, he has he has a little amateur experience. He's fought on, on the national level a couple of times. You know, the, the thing about this is you can't let that other guy's lack of wins deter you from the fight you have to you have to stick stick to the task at hand can't take him light stick to the task at, every task time at hand. you're still in there against a capable man capable man you still have to do what you have to do because you don't want to be the guy that gives him win number two you do not and in a fight anything can happen still Elijah, Hakeem Olajuwon came out taking his time taking his time Reed got his, has his hands up in a high guard. Elijah one needs to just sit back, throw his jab, and pick that lock a little bit. There he goes. Don't get caught with those choppy shots. Reed keeps leaping in. 
Reed just took one. It's not looking good. It's not looking good for Reed. Reed having some MMA experience, MMA experience look like he's about to shoot in a double leg and a <laughs> one and slam him. Possibly do a takedown on him. Elijah one looks relaxed. He looks very relaxed. Very. He should double that jab up. He'll get through that guard. Do it quick. Pick that lock a little bit. He'll set up that right hand more if he doubles yeah, that jab he, up. He needs to keep his right hand up, though. He keeps doing what's called the bow and arrow. When he throws his jab, he drags his right hand back. The old telltale sign. The old telltale sign. There's a good right hook there by him. By Elijah Vaughn setting uh, yes. Reed down. Reed at the moment just looks outclassed. Like yes, he doesn't he, does. he doesn't look ready for a, a boxing match. He doesn't at all. His feet are all everywhere. Elijah wants to shoot that jab down the stairs to his body a little bit too. Reed Reed is literally just waiting for one big shot. Yes, yes, right. The body work's gonna do it. And Elijah Wan takes off with the first round uh, stoppage. TKO. Good performance by Elijah on his pro debut. He looked pretty calm. He looked poised. He didn't. Uh, he didn't get over anxious, maybe just for a little bit at one time when he, when he threw that volley of punches. But for the most part, he looked pretty poised. Absolutely. The thing I liked about all the shots he threw was how he snuck in those body shots. Right, yes, he did. He'd draw your attention up high and then sneak one low. And for a guy like him, he has, he's had limited amateur experience, but he's fought on the national amateur level. So in that, in that small time frame, to be able to fight on the national amateur level says something about him. Absolutely. But, because he looked very relaxed. He looked very relaxed like he belonged in there. He, he didn't look overwhelmed by the hometown crowd that went crazy for him. But part of that, I, I'm going to go with like what you said, him fighting on that national level. That gets you used yes, to all the people yes. and bigger venues. Austin Reed just looked outclassed from the beginning. told there's certain ends of the pool you don't go into. <laughs> right. That, that's a hundred percent. You can hear the hometown crowd going crazy for it. Soy David Pérez de Tulsa, Oklahoma, y los quiero invitar a ver mi próxima pelea que va a estar en vivo en el canal The Zone. Va a ser abril 26 en Orlando, Florida. Va a ser otra batalla contra otro invicto y le vamos a ganar. Yo tengo un invicto record de 9-0 y él tiene 8-0. Vamos a seguir para adelante y espero que me apoyen. Gracias. Hey guys, it's David Perez from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to invite you guys out to check out my fight April 26 live on The Zone. We'll be in Orlando, Florida, be another battle of undefeateds. I'm looking to take this guy's record. I appreciate you guys if you guys come out and support me. If you're not able to catch the fight in live, it will be live on the zone April 26th. I appreciate your guys' support.
looked like the same uh, coaches from the last one. Yes, it does. Let's see if we get a better performance out of this one. As we are anticipating the highly return of Mr. Lizarraga. This is Carlos' first fight back, like what, in two years? It's been a while. I'm not for sure when, when the last time he's fought. But it's, it's been a bit. Remember, you're listening to Oklahoma's number one color commentating crew. Myself, Arlo. Literally. Myself, Arlo Jumper. Alongside me is Tulsa legend, Oklahoma icon, none other than Big Brother Thunder, Mr. Allen. Was it Sweetness? Sweetness, Allen Green. Yes. For those who don't know, say it twice. Say it twice. <laughs> He said even louder for the people in the back. Here we go. Now, what, what mental state does this mess with on the opponent who's got to wait for these? To a guy who's possibly fighting his first fight, it, 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 can, it can mess with you a lot. I mean, Bishop, this guy, uh, Bishop Harper, he has no amateur experience. He has uh, one pro fight. His, his record is the only one. He has one pro fight that she lost. So, I mean, it's, it's a strong possibility this is getting to a close Now, the other thing is... How do you stay warm waiting? Bounce. You got to bounce. Bounce. Move, move your upper body a little bit. And here we come. Here comes Mr. Lizarraga. And that's going to be interesting. Sometimes you have to see when a young fighter fights at home if they stick to the game plan or if they start swinging from the fences. And, you know, not just, not just fighting in his hometown, but a comeback fight off of a layoff. Yes. So you also got to add in the factor of, is there going to be any rush to this? Plus the hometown crowd, is there going to be any factor to this? All right. Something tells me if Lizarraga goes out and executes the way he should and gets on him, this fight shouldn't, shouldn't make it out of the first round. Lizarraga looks ready. He looks ready. Ready for what is the question? Exactly. Bishop starts off jabbing. Ooh. Bishop trying not to let uh, Carlos get his rhythm set. Yes, he is. Carlos, Carlos should be using his jab. He's trying to turn this into a fight right off. Looks like Bishop's ready for one, too. He's got some good shots on the inside, Bishop does. Find him with your jab first, Carlos. There you go. Find him with your jab. Sit back and relax a little bit. Pick your shots. Bishop needs to come, come forward with his double jab. You know, Bishop does all that work to get in and comes back out. Right. There it is. I think Bishop's squaring up too much when they get inside. That's why he keeps getting clipped with stuff. Carlos is staying real poised in this. There it is. Good one, too. Bishop's pushing back, though. He's game. And Bishop looks like he's got a solid chin. He's took some square ones right on yes. the chin. 
Liz Lizarraga should pay attention to his defense, though. He shouldn't be so reckless. He looks a little too comfortable in there at times. Yes. A little too laxed. But he's looking to land power shots. He should, be he should be landing his jab. Like I said, picking the lot. Absolutely. Get down some. Set up them big shots. I like to see Lizarraga uh, do some body work also. He should. Especially as squared up as Bishop, Bishop stays. Bishop, he looks a little soft around his midsection. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was one. He didn't like it. He's fighting back. He's a pretty game guy. He's very game. This, this rocket should keep his hand, his left hand up. He keeps getting hit with right hands. Now, do you think that's just something he's doing, or do you think that's just the ring rust catching up a little bit? Could be the ring rust. There it is, that nice little turn he got him with that right hand. There it is. He should be, he should be using his skills there. Absolutely. When he gets that close and you allow Bishop to punch back, you're making it almost like an even fight. What I mean by that is you're giving him a chance. You're giving him an equal opportunity to hit you just like you're hitting him. He should be on the outside using his jab, using his speed just a little bit. He didn't have to create too much space, but just enough. I think Lizaraga took that round, but he got hit just a little bit too much for my taste. Absolutely. I, I can totally agree with that. Lizaraga, Lizaraga, when he used the jab, was solid, and then he would abandon it and then come back to it, then abandon it. Lizaraga breathing already kind of hard over there in the corner. That, and that's probably the layoff catching up just a little bit. Scientific fact, the easiest punch to throw when you're tired is the jab. So you sit back and relax. you rest on your jab. You pick that lock, you break him down a little bit, and you rest on your jab. Then you start coming with the big shots. Absolutely. So if you throw all the big shots away in the first round, and you look across and this guy's still looking at you, it kind of it worries a man a little bit. It can work. As a fighter, it worries you just a little bit. Look at Lizaraga already breathing out the mouth a little bit. I'm, it worries me just a little bit. Yeah, Bishop got some quick hands for him for a, for a longer, for that longer reach. He needs to use that a little more. Kind of a long, gangly guy. Yeah. Lizarraga trying to use his jab a little bit now, but he's moving in a little too close. Good right hand, but you got to set it up. You got to set the knockout up. Good body shot. Lizarraga fighting very flat-footed at the moment also. Yes, and you can see Bishop still got a little pep in his step. He's getting, yes, he's getting a little reckless. He should just take his time. If you take his time, here's the thing I tell guys. Instead of trying to just out, outright throw 10 hard punches, you may just land one. But if you take your time and relax, you'll, say ten, you'll see 10 different ways to land one punch. Absolutely. And that's the thing, people, people get that clock in their head. And start thinking, oh, I got to go out there and just land the shots instead of picking the lock, like you said. Zerraga gets hit with two right hands in a row. He needs to keep he that left up. He needs up. to pay attention to his defense. He's getting too reckless. You don't want to make a habit out of that. Yeah, you absolutely. don't want to make a habit out of that. And he's pushing up against the guy also. He's probably possibly going to make himself tired. That guy can take a shot. He can definitely eat he, eat a good shot. Oh, Bishop, Bishop takes a good shot. Great right hand by Lizarraga. And he should put his punches together instead of landing single shots. If he punches, puts his punch together and then throws a clean up hook, we'll get this fight over with. Absolutely. Do you think that's the fatigue factor sitting there? Why he doesn't have the, enough to pull the trigger on the second one? Possibly. Or do you think that's the rust coming off this layoff sitting in too? Could be a little bit of both. There it is. Needs to stay on him. Work that body too at the same time. I think he could get him on the ground if he go throw a body shot on those insides. 
There's that defense See, again. He's, that you, he's, sitting there, he's sitting there waiting just to land hard shots. He should be picking on him, touching on him. He's keep, he keeps pushing up against this guy to land one single shot. He should be touching him. Because the guy's game, he's, I mean, he's still trying to stay in there. And he's ate all those big shots so he's far. Not, he's not going quietly. And you know, but the same thing about Bishop. Bishop should use that reach, make Carlos work a little he more. Should. If I see a guy flat-footed standing there, I'm going to make him work harder to get inside on me. I get the round of his arrival. I do, I do too, based on the work and the, and the, and the quality of the punches landed. You know, like the body language Lizard Rock is giving in the corner right now is what's is what's bothering me. Like like Lizard Rock looks pretty exhausted at this moment yeah, right now in his corner. He needs to settle down and box this round. Just step around him and jab him. You'd be surprised. Good things happen when you sit back and rely on your boxing fundamentals. Good things happen. Good jab to the body by Bishop. Open the round up. I think both of them could benefit from that jab into that body, the way both of them are breathing. If I was Bishop, I would test that gas tank from the man that's coming off the layoff and, and stick to that body work. And if I and Bishop looks like he has the fresher legs, because should should try moving too. See if he can out. There we see a double jab right hand from Mr. Rival, but he's, he's his defense is lacking. Very. Bishop tried to mount a, little, mount a little resistance there for a second. I think uh, Lizarraga found something with that little lunge and jab, yes. stepping in with that little lunge jab, with that followed by that too. He needs, but, he needs to touch him with more than more than one. Double jabs, right hand, left. He could possibly get a knockout if he does that, but he's throwing single shots, one shot at a time. He's trying to land that one devastating kill shot, which it doesn't work that way. Either. He's double it up. He's landing. He, he, he should be sitting back and landing it right there. You don't have to jump in and throw anything crazy. Pop it. Bishop comes in leading with that head anyways when he jumps in with his. Oh, that was a good right hand by Bishop. Bishop would keep throwing that right hand. It's finding its home. Somebody needs to tell Bishop that it's finding its home. Bishop needs to keep his hands up. There it is. He gets hit again. And I believe it's starting to take its toll on his left eye if you look at it. which could give him some problems in this next round, which is probably the last round. There are four rounds tonight, right? Yes. His rugger looks a little tired in there. He looks a little tired. He's going forward, but he, he, but he looks tired. Bishop needs to start working on that body. Good right hand again, see, Bishop. See how much steam he has left in the end in there. How much, how much gas he got left? Oh, that's a good Bishop. uppercut. Great uppercut by Lizarraga. He but see, he left, should, he left up to the body and the right uppercut to the head. That's what I'm saying. He should throw more than one shot. And I think more than one shot out of the same hand. Same hand work. Yeah, same hand work would, would be a good thing for him. Because he could have followed that uppercut with a two. But like you've been saying, he's settling with that one big shot. Oh. You know, I think That's Lizarraga there, that good, was a close round. Good round, but I say Lizarraga may have, may have, may have edged it out. And, and I think Lizarraga edged it out yes. based on those uppercuts to me at the end of the round. Yes. Because the only reason I say that is because to me, those were the two best punches of yes, that round. He, he, yes. He 
needs to relax. The way you take control of a fight is with your jab. Absolutely. He's trying to muscle. He's trying to muscle all his shots and be physical with this guy. He needs to rely on his extra skills. Go fourth and final round right here. There's that jab to the body again, but I guarantee you, his coach told him the same thing. That's that gas tank by going to the body. Bishop came right out to Mizoraka. Bishop's throwing punches, but they're nothing behind it. He's just touching him. Yeah. And it's not even like he's trying to set something up by touching him. He's just touching him. Good uppercut by Bishop. Another good uppercut. And you got to watch those, man. Those sneaky clipping yes, shots is what. Get, yes. You got to watch those. trying to pour it on a little bit, but if he should just relax, relax and throw some combinations, he could possibly get a stoppage, but he's throwing single shots. You know, I think that stoppage could go both ways. If Bishop would up up, up his output and go to that body, he, he could find out what's left in that tank of Lizarraga real quick. And they have a point. You know, when Carlos lands those big head shots, and he, I, I would like to see him work that body. Yes, he, he needs to settle down, though. He keeps, he keeps like, laying, laying his head, stepping over too far, leaning in too much, being over his legs. You don't want to be like that. You lose power, power when you do that, and you're susceptible to uppercuts and other punches. You, you lose the power, you're susceptible to uppercuts, and you lose your balance yes. all in one movement. Carlos showing that he wants it more in this moment, I believe. Yes, he should be throwing combinations and going to his body. More than one shot, you can get him. Because I, I haven't counted Carlos going to that body that much this fight. He's, he's been head hunting, which is probably a lot to do with the rust. Possibly. Bishop looking like the tired fighter now. Big body shot by Lizarraga on that one. Followed by that right hand. His right hand could find the home too because Bishop doesn't guard it well either. Yes, Bishop, Bishop seems like a game guy. You can tell he lacks experience, but he seems like a game guy. Very. He's trying to give a spirit, spirit performance. That's a good way to end it. That's a good way to end it. You know, I, I got it either, regardless it's a unanimous decision, but I either got it, I, I think I got it three to one, three rounds to one, because I give that uh, third round to Bishop. Okay. I, I, I could see that. It was, a iffy, it was an iffy round for me, too. It was very iffy. But that fourth round, Lizarraga really showed that he wanted the fight more. Yes. I think Bishop knows he lost. Like Bishop's body language is not of a man who thinks he's even close in this fight right now. 
Nope. He can walk out of here with some self-respect because he still he tried. Absolutely. He fought hard and fought his best. That he did. And you know, I, I that could just be me reaching to give him one. It happens. It you happens, know, yeah. because I was like, it was a very toss-up round. You know, it's all relative. It can be like a guy can get seen like the, the round before can seem like such a landslide. So if he comes in the next round and mounts a little resist, a little resistance and lands some punches, you're like, oh, it's all relative. Like, oh, look, he's doing right? better. So some, you, sometimes you're inclined to give him the round. Soy David Pérez de Tulsa, Oklahoma, y los quiero invitar a ver mi próxima pelea que va a estar en vivo en el canal The Zone. Va a ser abril 26 en Orlando, Florida. Va a ser otra batalla contra otro invicto y le vamos a ganar. Yo tengo un invicto record de 9-0 y él tiene 8-0. Vamos a seguir para adelante y espero que me apoyen. Gracias. Hey guys, it's David Perez from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to invite you guys out to check out my fight April 26 live on The Zone. We'll be in Orlando, Florida. Be another battle of undefeateds. I'm looking to take this guy's record. I appreciate you guys. If you guys come out and support me, if you're not able to catch the fight in live, it will be live on the zone April 26th. I appreciate your guys' support.
get one or the other. You get speed with a little power or a lot of power with a little speed. You had you had both. And that's why like you troubled a lot of those people, even in the Super Six. You went against, in one of my opinion, arguably the best 168 pounder I think ever at Andre Ward. And you went the distance. Then you go the distance with him, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Andre was trying to. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, he was trying. And he's, Great I mean, fighter. he knocked Great. out Kovalov. Great fighter. You know, Great yeah. Fighter. And you Great could fighter. see when you would catch him, it was like, oh, okay, I don't like this. You know, and that, that's what, like, to me, that, that shiny moment, regardless of how the outcomes come out of the, out of the tournament, you established Oklahoma that it could be a boxing state. Thank you. You're welcome. I've been wanting to tell you that for years, uh, but I've yeah, never got just the chance to. The final, your main event of the I, I like being able to but display that really in front of these crowds. Yeah. So because I always feel like, as far as Oklahoma out, goes, at times I feel like you're not appreciated yeah. enough as it as it was. Right, right, right. And I'm not sitting here trying to toot your horn. I wouldn't. No, I, I know what you mean. I but I feel like you fell through the cracks on some of the Oklahoma fighters. Because I came along when it was kind of dead for boxing around here. You Very much I mean? so. And then I started getting on TV a lot. Yeah. Kind of, you know, but I was the only one. Yeah, like you brought. And you know what I mean? I was the only one. It wasn't, you know, so it was kind of like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you take those 90s, you had more. Now you have like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had more. So you're right. But now you have like, you have uh, David Perez. You have Jeremiah Milton. We just saw, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon yep. and uh, Carlos Lizarraga. We have, a, you know, we have fighters coming out of Oklahoma that are, you know. That, starting, that's got some potential. Things, yeah. And like you said, like like I thought the way you handled the Super Six interviews, I wish they could have caught you earlier oh, with those cameras. Because you could have sold yourself yeah. a million times over. We appreciate it very much. We know the boxers do too. Like I said, people never heard your story. They just got to see that pit bull look you gave walking to the ring. You know what I mean? The world's sexiest pit bull. That yeah. is. That is. <laughs> he, he said, who's the baddest? <laughs> like now, you could have came out as a walkout with that. Yeah. I'd, I'd have been one of the guys that said, who's the baddest? And Chandler showed up. Showed up. <laughs> <laughs> he said, kiss my converse. I guess we're having a little uh, small hiatus before the short hiatus before the uh, main event. Soy David Perez de Tulsa, Oklahoma, y los quiero invitar a ver mi próxima pelea que va a estar en vivo en el canal The Zone. Va a ser abril 26 en Orlando, Florida. Va a ser otra batalla contra otro invicto y le vamos a ganar. Yo tengo un invicto record de 9-0 y él tiene 8-0. Vamos a seguir para adelante y espero que me apoyen. Gracias. Hey, guys. It's David Perez from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to invite you guys out to check out my fight April 26th live on The Zone. We'll be in Orlando, Florida. Be another battle of undefeateds. I'm looking to take this guy's record. I appreciate you guys. If you guys come out and support me, if you're not able to catch the fight in live, it will be live on the zone April 26th. I appreciate your guys' support. Your old protégés aren't there anymore. Right. Like it's it's okay to be 28 and take that pro debut. And the guy, this guy Ashton Royal, who's uh, Terrence is fighting, he has a. Uh, He's one in nine as a professional fighter. He has uh, 45 amateur fights. He so he's got some experience too. Trains in Omaha, Texas. Not Omaha, Nebraska, Omaha, Texas. He trains at a place called House of Champs. So he has some experience. Guys like him can be a little treacherous if you, if you take them light because he does know how to box. Absolutely. I mean, just because he has this many losses, I mean, you can't just think that, oh, I'm going to get him. Because if you don't remind him, who he is or what the fighters of all time. Know, know who we are until we fail. They say every man is defined by his reaction to any given situation. Well, who do you want to define you? Someone else or yourself? Whatever you do, honey, give your heart to us. Coming to the ring. 
hometown crowd. Terrence, originally from Kansas City. Kansas City, Missouri, fighting out of Tulsa, Oklahoma now. He looks ready. Yeah, he's been waiting on his thing for a very long time. Royal in the opposite corner looks ready to fight himself. Yeah, they do. Both of them look ready. Terrence Reed with Aaron Sloan and Wendell Armstrong in his corner. Royal don't shook by the home, doesn't look shook by the hometown crowd so far. Here it is. Showtime. The main event. Terrence Reed versus Austin Royal. Let's see how Reed comes out. There it is. There's that double jab comes moving off the, of Comes out with the double jab. Popping the jab to the body. Using that elevator going up and down is what yes, you got to do. Got another good jab yeah. by Terrence. See, he was expecting that jab to the body. See that's, how he crouched that, down that, into yes, it. Yes, when he's jabbing, that's how you do it. You discourage a guy like that. Austin Warrior going to jab himself. He's sitting back, though, like he's, not, like he's unsure of himself. Very. Like you've been saying, he's fighting behind Reed. Yeah, Reed got to start doubling that jab up and shooting it downstairs. Be careful. It would serve him best to keep this fight on the outside. So he can use like that speed and that reach. Reed looks very poised in there. He does. Very he looks very, looks very poised. And very comfortable at this moment. Yes, he does. Oh, nice little check hook. Caught him. Here he it comes. Relax, Here it comes. The legs are straightening. He has to relax. Relax. Yep. He got caught with a hook himself. He needs to relax. Take your time. Take your time. Because when you wound them animals, they still come at you. Yes. He has to take his time. Royal needs to use his jab. He keeps running, rushing in, and Terrence is catching him with a check hook. Reed looks like a cobra waiting to strike. Yes, he does. Just waiting on him, which is a very good game plan working for him so far. Royal looks a little nervous now, a little oh. anxious. He just starts taking the jab to, um, to Royal's belly, though. Absolutely. Like he did earlier. He needs to quit abandoning that jab game plan. There it is. We should start. We should probably start doubling this jab up and coming to Austin Warrior a little bit. Kind of. Kinda. Austin Warriors. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Reed probably saw that punch coming last week. Right. He's really lunging in. Not doesn't have a game plan to get in. He wants to lunge in with one big shot, which is going to catch up to him here in a minute. Because when you lunge in from that distance, you're going to get caught with something. I definitely give yes. that round the race. Uh, we we turn on that round. He has to be careful. He's, he's he's stepping in too big with a lot of his shots and it turns into a lunge. That's where you see how they got caught up and he kind of fell over him when he threw the one, two. He just needs to take a short step. Short step to land his jab, land two or three jabs, use it as a range finder, yep. get it going, and then, then you start landing the right hand. Like we said earlier, a lot of boxing's a lot of short steps done quick. Some guys you can ease into a knockout. Almost manipulate them into a knockout. Guide them into it. Yep. <laughs> and they don't even know what they're doing. They're just getting guided into it. 
Reed looks look, Reed looks good over there in the corner. He's still breathing normal. He's he's ready. Now, do you think that's a benefit turning pro at, at, at a little bit of a later age? That some of those it depends on the guy. It depends on the guy. Round two up. Royal comes in. Nice little jab to the body. Oh, good good right solid hand. right hand. Good right hand by Reed. Very good right hand. He just needs to keep setting those we'll go up. Go back up to the double jab. Absolutely. That jab's been picking that lock so far. See right there, that's what I mean by stepping in too big. Good jab. Do you think that stepping in too much is also sometimes that wider stance Reed has? Yes. Reed's very composed. Ashton Royal seems a little tentative. Very. Now, do you think Reed should tack on that? Yes, but behind the jab. But behind the jab. Yes, he should do it with his double jab. That's another good two right there. Yes, he has to put his punch together. Absolutely. One, two, clean it up with a hook. Ashton Royal keeps throwing these unorthodox punches. And Reed is making it miss. And like not even effective. See right there again. See, Reed has to step in with that jab. He steps in with a good jab and not steps in too much, just enough, and lands a right hand square, he'll probably knock him out. Absolutely. You know, but like just that short step. That last one, he took a good short step with that jab and then took a step with the two and almost smothered it. You're right, yeah, really, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He needs to just let that two go behind that jab instead of. As his uh, as his, as his career progresses, he'll he'll start to figure that out. Right now, it's a habit, and sometimes habits are hard to break. Good right. defense. There was that. There it is. Good hook. You see, he sh he should start going at this guy. The check hook's there. Yes, because he's. He's hurt him. He's buzzed him twice with some shots in the last round and this round. But he should start going at him just like a little bit. You know, he's established that jab very well. I like to see him throw some feints in there. Yeah. That feint, I think that feint would bait him into a right hand, too. Right as we say it. Jab, jab, right there. Pop, pop. Yep. Double it up. Waiting too keep long. Him, yeah, keep him going. Keep him going. To keep him going. Royals just trying to... I hope he can land something big. Right. Very good round for you. Very, very good. Round. Solid very, round. Very good. His first two pro rounds, very good. Absolutely. Start going to, going to Royal so you, so you can get to his body. See what he's made of. Them body shots really tell you what the man's made of. Which, like, again, like I said, that's a dying art in boxing, the body shots. Terrence Reed, looking, look, he's, looking, he's looking pretty good in his first time out as a professional. Absolutely. He's looking pretty good. He's looking pretty good. I'm glad to see him. Work that jab. Establish that jab. He's double it up a little bit, though. Yes. Instead right of waiting for that big right hand. It happened again. That's what I mean by jumping in. You just take a short step and double it up. You can land his right hand right at the end. He'll get him. You know, with as much as he's established that right, that uh, jab, 
I, I used to always listen to Mike Tyson. Mike said sometimes I would put it out there just to move off of. Didn't care if it landed. Right, right, right. Just to move off because of. Because it's easier to punch when you're already, already punching. It's easier to move when you're already moving. Easy. Touch, touch, double it up. He doubles, doubles his job. Check up. I thought that was a good I did too. I he, thought it was a knockdown. I did too. He was still a punch. It was still a punch. And Royal's acting like it's a knockdown. Look at him. He, he, ain't, he ain't lunging anymore. He's backing up. You know, I like to see a little bit more angle cuts by Reed too right. of this. If, if he would move a little bit, I think he could he could really yeah. He could, he could since, get Royal since out Since Royal's laying back, I guess he, he just I guess he just thinks that he doesn't really have to. He can sit there. He can just pick him apart from there. Right in. Royal, Royal looks like he's just hoping that one of these big shot yes, lands yes. and gets him out of there. Oh, oh man. Man. It's been there all night. You've been saying it. Jab, jab, touch him, jab, jab. And he, and he didn't See, lunge he, in. He should, be, he should be popping that jab at him. He's keeping him busy with him. Right there again. Short step, just like that. Bring your right hand up. There you go. Just needs to follow it. Good uppercut off that jab. Royal has no real rhythm. Like he just he runs in. He doesn't. Yeah, and I think that's why Reed's having an easy time picking him apart on Tyson. Yes, the only chance Warrior would have is to get close, get close and just swing. But he probably he probably would get counted. And you know that's that that goes back to me like a lot of their training. Of uh, it goes back to their training in my opinion because a lot of these people don't know quote unquote coaches don't know how to train the other their fighters reach. Knowing how to find that reach, knowing how to understand your your opponent's reach, and then you get guys like you end up getting guys like Royal that just come running with the jab, right. trying to get inside. That's why the first thing you need to start is footwork. Absolutely. On up, feet on up. And well, you know, and that's how you build houses from the foundation on up. That's how you build anything. Royal Royal looks looks outclassed. Very. And it's showing, like you can see frustration setting in, you can see discouragement setting in. I think if Reed, if, if Reed really wants to, he can get him out in this round. He just has to be smart about it. Pop yep. the jab, double it up. Just a little. And he needs to relax a little bit more. Let that fight come to him. Because Royal will come to you if you just wait patiently. And he makes a lot of mistakes when he comes to you. I like that double hook he just threw right then. Like Royal has no real technique to him. He just gets in there and starts trying to slug when they get close. Sometimes sometime guys like that can throw you off too. But he's, Terrence is handling it, handling, handling it pretty well. Absolutely. He's dealing with it. He, he's dealing very well with the off rhythm style right, of, exactly. of Royal. Good right hand. That's a good uppercut. And you know that uppercut's been there a lot this night. In order to get 
Roy Rathler, he'd have to change his punch cadence up just a little bit. Absolutely. Kind of like touch, 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 touch. Kind of like a, a, di a different rhythm, a different cadence of his punches he, so he can hit him more. Ooh. That uppercut's been there all night, though, because he keeps dipping his head so low. Royal can take a good shot. I'll give him that. See, again, there it was that lunging, just no rhythm of trying to pick that lock. And which, which I think, like you've said before, I think that uh, changing your rhythm will come with time with Reed. Like right there, he, he started switching up that rhythm just there. But Reed's probably also not feeling super threatened right at the moment, so that's why he hasn't changed much up. Double jab right here. It's there. Good clip right there, but Royals trying, Royals trying to mount, mount a little attack. Reed looked like he had him going there. I think that was a good pro debut, though, by Reed. Overall, yes, it was. What What would you grade that performance? Uh, that's hard to say. I mean, I give I give him at least a B. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I think that's a very good grade. Yes. And I don't mean to be as any disrespect. No, I no, no, mean, I understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah. just that. H had he done all that and stopped him, you probably would have given him that. I got you. Yeah. But, I mean, he looks good. He looks poised. Very. He took, he took his time. He landed some good jabs. But I, I, the, the reason I offset that grade there is because, like what we said earlier, about mixing up that, uh, that, that yeah, that mixing up that punch count, mixing up that rhythm. Some things he could have done that would have offset a lot. But all in all, very good performance and a, yes, and a, a promising, very, promising very performance. Very good performance. I'm proud of him. And a very promising pro, uh, performance from Terrence. Yes. Yes, oh, I'm mean, of course. Good performance. Good, very good performance. Well, here we are. This is it. Y'all just seen the final bout. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope y'all enjoyed it. This is it for myself, Arlo Jumper, and... Sweetness, Alan Green, a.k.a. Big Brother Thunder. Till the next time. Till the next time. We will see you all back here whenever they bring us back or have another live event. Till then, we will see you all in the funny pages. Soy David Pérez de Tulsa, Oklahoma, y los quiero invitar a ver mi próxima pelea que va a estar en vivo en el canal The Zone. Va a ser abril 26 en Orlando, Florida. Va a ser otra batalla contra otro invicto y le vamos a ganar. Yo tengo un invicto record de 9-0 y él tiene 8-0. Vamos a seguir para adelante y espero que me apoyen. Gracias. Hey guys, it's David Perez from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to invite you guys out to check out my fight April 26th live on The Zone. We'll be in Orlando, Florida. Be another battle of undefeateds. I'm looking to take this guy's record. I appreciate you guys. If you guys come out and support me, if you're not able to catch the fight in live, it will be live on the zone April 26th. I appreciate your guys' support.